Hi everybody, I'm Andreas of uh, Von Winning in the Pfalz uh, in Germany and uh, I'm very happy to give you a short introduction uh, today about um, a little recap of the winery, about uh, the region and then about the 2020 GGs, uh, our Grand Cru's, which uh, are going to be released uh, very soon and as we have some uh, several of them um, I'm happy to give you a little overview and for that I would like to uh, share my screen and show you a little presentation that I have prepared for you. So our logo, you know, here we go. So von Winning in the Pfalz in Deidesheim, uh, we, are, uh, we have a history that goes back 300 years and um, the winery as it is today, as you see on the picture, uh, is standing there at Weinstraße, the German wine route in Deidesheim number 10 since 1849. Uh, it has always been a winery and um, we have mainly made Riesling, which is the main variety in Germany, of course, but also in the Pfalz, which is the world's largest Riesling area. Um, in addition to that, there is uh, Sauvignon Blanc, which is very important for us, but also um, Pinot varieties like uh, Pinot Blanc, Chardonnay, and when it comes to red wine, uh, the Pinot Noir, you actually can see the vineyards starting here right behind the winery with the Greinhübel, Grand Cru, which is one of the vineyard sites we'll talk about later. And in, in addition to, um, or um, uh, we have the goal to bring the outstanding and historic terroir, especially of Riesling, to the glass and to the bottle. And uh, in order to do that, we work very close uh, to nature in the vineyards. A little map here, we are situated in Deidesheim. Uh, we have outstanding vineyard sites in Forst, which is one, uh, one village north of Deidesheim, in Ruppertsberg, one village south, and then in uh, Neustadt Königsbach and Neustadt Hart, further south. This is a radius of um, 10 uh, kilometers, uh, in which all those vineyards are uh, concentrated, about um, uh, eight different, seven different Premier Crus and eight different Grand Crus, which we're going to talk about but also the other varieties um, I told you about. So uh, work very close to nature um, in the vineyards. I think it goes without saying that uh, only with high respect for nature, um, a balanced ecosystem, a living soil and balanced vines and grapes, you can come to the potential of those historic vineyard sites. And then in the cellar, it is the goal to accompany those wines to the glass and to the bottle. And in order to do that, we work uh, very sensitively, we work by gravity, uh, the grapes coming in, we crush and macerate for um, six to 12 hours in order to extract aroma, but also phenolic compounds from the skin, the surface of the stems. Then the presses go to the, uh, the grapes go to the presses by gravity. And from there, the juice flows in uh, to the cellar freely by gravity as well, to then ferment in um, oak barrels of various sizes. And as we talk about the Grand Cru's, the GG's today, they ferment and age exclusively in 500 liter oak barrels, which is as traditional as it gets. Of course, in the past decades, um, there was the paradigm in Germany of um, Riesling and stainless steel of clear, crisp, fresh and fruit driven wine, wines, which are and can be very, very nice but it's a completely different expression if you ferment them in barrels. We uh, like to ferment naturally to give um, more depth and um, uh, complexity to the aroma. Um, we really like the structure of the wines. Um, I told you about the maturation, but uh, those phenolic compounds uh, polymerizing with the tenants of the oak in the barrels um, give the wines a wonderful um, phenolic structure um, that gives the wines a great frame and aging potential. Um, the structure together with the acidity, especially talking about Riesling, um, is underlining the saltiness, the salinity of the different vineyard sites in a natural way and hence support the terroir. It's never the goal to make oak driven wines. Uh, we use very little new barrels and if they are new, they are very lightly toasted, rather roasted than toasted for a long time. Um, um, and then it's mostly second and third passage of the barrels and older ones. 
Um, it's about the things I told you. Um, it's depth and complexity of aroma, it's structure, and um, still the wines have a lot of finesse and elegance, expression of fruits, but this core of, of structure and concentration uh, lease contact for uh, for uh, one and a half years. Um, we uh, we keep the GGs in those barrels in which they ferment for a year and a half before we bottle them. Um, so uh, great redox potential and fantastic aging potential in those wines and just living um, wines with a lot of um, potential and expression. That is our goal. It's our goal to express the terroir of the different vineyards, especially the Grand Cruz. And let's dive into those, starting in Deidesheim. We have four Grand Cru sites in Deidesheim and four in Forst, which is one village uh, north. We start with the Greinhübel, which is right behind the winery you saw in the other picture. The winery is right here and the it's, Greinhübel is a southward facing slope, one of the very few southward facing slope because the hard mountains, which you can see here in the backgrounds, all the best vineyard sites in the Pfalz are sloping up those mountains. They benefit from afternoon shadow because the sun is setting behind them and we have yeah, shadow on the slopes in the afternoon, giving cool conditions, nice warm days, but cool afternoons and nights. Uh, also light soil up there. Um, and um, even though the Pfalz is relatively warm for German standards, uh, we can make fine and elegant wines because of that, because um, the acidity remains uh, very, very intense as a backbone, and also the uh, aromas remain very fine and elegant and full of expression. So most of the sites sloping up the hard mountains are facing eastwards or a little bit southeastward. Um, the Greinhübel is one of only two vineyards that we have that face southwards, making it uh, a bit warmer in comparison to the other vineyards, like the Kalkofen, we'll talk about next, which is on the plateau right above it. Um, which means we always pick the Greinhübel about a week and a half before we pick the Kalkofen. Both those vineyards have in common that there is sandstone, 250 million year old sandstone is the basis of our vineyards, of all of the soils but also limestone in the soil. Um, there was an ocean in the Rhine Valley. We are situated in the Rhine Valley Rift between 50 and 35 million years ago. Uh, there was subtropical climate back then and there were coral reefs along the Hart Mountains and the Vokes, yeah, as you cross the border with Alsace, 50 kilometers south, this direction, you will cross uh, the border with France and the mountains, the Hart Mountains continue as the Vokes. Um, and you find limestone on several occasions uh, in several locations and um, yeah I think we all know that limestone is always fantastic for for wine look at Champagne look at Burgundy um, to name but a few uh, always leading to salty uh, and racy and quite complex wines and the Greinhübel is no expression even though due to the southward facing um, slope it's uh, it's a bit warmer and reaches the uh, yeah the physiological ripeness that we that we seek a bit earlier than the other vineyards. Uh, so I would describe the Greinhübel as very charming, um, and um, it does the wine wrong to call it an entry level GG because it's not. It is um, it is a very very complex wine, but due to its open hearted charmingness, um, the stone fruit that you find there uh, almost exotic at times. It is, uh, it, is, uh, it is a wonderful wine and it's easy uh, to fall in love with. The plateau right above, right here on this picture, is the Kalkofen. Yeah? So the Greinhübel is down here, Kalkofen on the plateau above, making it a bit cooler. Uh, very good sun exposure, but not as warm as the Greinhübel is. Soil almost the same. Uh, but when you compare the two, when you taste them side by side, uh, the Kalkofen is the, uh, the bit uh, leaner, racier, and uh, let's say more masculine of, uh, of the two. Um, it's, um, it's clearly a, a high class, a high class uh, Grand Cru um, of Deidesheim. And again, uh, the same combination of, of sandstone and limestone in the soil, but on the, on the plateau. And very important for the Kalkofen, um, the heart of it is uh, the oldest, um, has the oldest vines that we have in the winery. Uh, it's about 65 uh, years old. From here, we continue towards the Hart Mountains, uh, further on the plateau, and go to the Kieselberg. Yeah, when I go back quickly, 
you see the little chapel um, uh, on the next picture is up here and we just move forward and the next picture is taken from here upwards. Here's the chapel, yeah. And in comparison to Kalkofen being on the same plateau, but closer to the Hart Mountains, the Kieselberg is a bit cooler because you have um, shadow in the afternoon there a bit earlier. And Kiesel in German means pebble. Um, so it's a quite permeable soil. Uh, in dry years, um, it, it doesn't suffer, but um, it's, um, it, there's a lot of water drainage there. And Kieselberg is always the, yeah, the raciest, the, the most focused, the, uh, the leanest in a positive way um, of, uh, of all of the GGs of Deidesheim. It has less limestone than Kalkofen has and than Greibhübel has. It's pretty much a, a sandstone site. Um, and yeah, more, more focused and, and elegant maybe than the ones before. And it's in Deidesheim only topped by Langenmorgen. And I picked a photo of the Paradis Garden, of the Premier Crusite Paradise Garden. We are looking straight south now. So we move from down closer and closer to the Hart Mountains, and now we look south. Uh, Paradis Garden is a Premier Crusite, which is... Um, which has a Grand Cru site in its, in its heart. So this is all Paradis Garden. And this part here is Langenmorgen, a long stretched and uh, narrow part, which is, you can't really see it on the picture, but it's a little bit less, um, um, yeah, I cannot really say steep. I try to avoid the word, but I don't know a better one. Uh, every colleague from the Mosel or the Nahe or the Rheingau that hears me um, talk about steepness will, um, yeah, throw slate slate at me. This is not steep at all, but it's on the slope and uh, there is less slope in the Langenmorgen compared to Paradiesgarten. It's also um, sheltered by this little ridge of bushes and trees. So the Langenmorgen is uh, like a concentrated and complex version of the Paradiesgarten, which is the finest and most elegant, the most feminine of our premier cruise. And same goes for the Langenmorgen when it comes to the, to the Grand Cruise. It's um, a very filigrane, uh, but has a great concentration in its core. Um, stone fruits, it's almost floral at times. And it's unfortunately our rarest GG. We uh, produce um, most of the time less than 2000 bottles of it per year. So this is very, very hard to get. Um, uh, we have very little and um, not much comes to the US and um, if you happen to find a bottle of the Langenmorgen, count yourself lucky because it's a great wine and there is little. Moving one village north to Forst. And of all the GGs, I picked one as an example uh, to taste with you, actually, um, the 2020 Ungeheuer GG, which is a very special one. Because let's first talk about Forst. In addition to sandstone and a lot of limestone, nowhere else you find more limestone than in this village, there's also volcanic basalt. And this is unique to the soils of this village. Nowhere else in the, in the Pfalz region you, you find this. So this com combination of sandstone, limestone, and basalt is unique, making the wines racy, salty, dramatic. There's a dimension of everything more in the wines of Forst, in my opinion, also the expression of fruit. And um, famous since centuries, the Ungeheuer was poured at the opening ceremony of the Suez Canal in Egypt in 1869. Queen Victoria had it poured. And um, yeah, since then, it's uh, all the vineyard names of Forst. We'll talk about the others uh, right after this one, but uh, the big names and among the, yeah, the finest breasting sites that you find on the planet, for sure. Um, and yeah, I said it's Ungeheuer always complex, salty, racy. I'll taste the 2020 for you. Ooh. And it is racy. Mm. It is uh, super salty. It is elegant. 2020 in comparison to 2019, which where the yield was very low, which was very concentrated. Um, is more on the elegant side, but with almost the same fruit expression, um, but more elegant. Um, now we have 2021 in the cellar, which is even more elegant and racy. So 2020 really sits uh, when it comes to, to finesse and elegance and um, um, acidity 
between those uh, two vintages. I love all three of them. 19 is the rarest, 21 is the raciest, and 20 is just, uh, is just wonderful. Um, we, have, um, we have 13 alcohol on this wine, um, which you do not feel at all. It's an elegant wine, and um, what I just said goes for all of the GGs of 2020. There is a lot of elegance and finesse. Who would have expected in a warm year um, that 2020 was? Um, and wonderful fruit expression. The aging potential is huge. And um, yeah, uh, I'm very happy that um, the wines came out like this since we bottled them, which is um, only a few weeks ago. It's the first time I taste it myself um, from the bottle. So, um, well, cheers to that. When you say cheers, you have to drink, so I'll do it. All right, next one is Pechstein. Uh, Ungeheuer is right here, next to it and up on the slope. Pechstein is this vineyard here. Starting here, going down to the, to the Weinstraße and is, in my opinion, um, uh, probably the finest site that we have. It's the highest amount of Basalbeer. It's almost exotic fruit. The fruit is very open, but um, it is extremely salty and racy. It's like a razor blade cutting through your palate in the in the most pleasant way. And um, I really, really love that site. The Kirchenstück, which we'll talk about um, later, is um, Germany's single most valuable vineyard site. But when you compare the wines, for me, um, Pechstein in most of the vintages is the go-to wine. But this is me personally. Um, um, all of the Forst wines are outstanding, starting with the Ungeheuer. In between, so the next vineyard um, to the south here is uh, the Jesuiten Garden, Garden of the Jesuits, belong to this monk order once. Um, so the other picture of Pechstein was taken from down here and up. This is taken from right here, from this road and down. Yeah, you see this, uh, this uh, the village right here, yeah. Um, it's, it's close to Pechstein, um, but Pechstein goes higher up, making it cooler and more racy. Uh, it's also a high amount of, um, of basalt there. And um, I think also taste and, uh, and expression wise, it's between Kirchenstück and Pechstein, not all, only in location, but also in profile, um, because it really is racy on the one hand side but also has the monumental whiteness and structure that the Kirchenstück of Forst has. Here you see the church. Kirchenstück is right here. And here you see it. This is all Kirchenstück, but the original piece of it is the piece right behind the church, 1.5 hectares, where we um, are lucky enough to own one third. Uh, so half a hectare of the original Kirchenstück. It's, it's sitting, you see it well here, on little, um, uh, on little sandstone wall surrounding it. So it's like a clo a little bit. Uh, you find many tiny, tiny splinters of basalt. So a high amount of basalt there. Limestone as well. There is, um, it's, it's a very sheltered site, making uh, the wine a bit more monumental. It takes more time to open up and um, to, to unfoil. Aging potential in all of those wines is, uh, is huge, but Kirchenstück is probably the one that I would give the most time in the decanter, uh, even though I recommend it with all of those wines. And to tell you the truth, even with our premier cruise, like uh, the Paradise Garden, the Leinhöhle, or the Reiterpfad, a bit of air in the decanter does not, uh, is not bad at all. On the other hand side, it opens up and the wines uh, develop positively for hours and even days. Um, GG's even more, of course. Uh, I can't wait to be back in the US, hopefully this year, to um, taste them with you and talk to them, um, talk about them with you. But uh, I hope this little introduction helps you to uh, understand what you have in your hands. And uh, I can't wait to share personally. So see you. See you in the States. <laughs>